Hey everybody, Josh from Silka here with a really exciting announcement that, uh, at least for us internally here, has been over a year in the making. Uh, and a product that I think we've hinted uh, to maybe here and there on the podcast, and so we're getting a lot of uh, a lot of questions. But today it is going live, and that is a brand new Silka Ultimate Tubeless Tire Sealant. Um, this one was interesting. You know, I think... We started out with the same sort of science-based approach that we took with the lubricants. And I want to just quickly jump back into that. You know, I think when we got into lubricants, people were like, Josh, you're a pump company. You're crazy. Lubricants, I'm like, well, there's all this science that we know about that can be applied in this category. Um, and I look at us today, and we're dominating really two out of the three uh, t lubricant categories at Zero Friction Cycling's data. We won a Tech Innovation of the Year Award last year uh, for our lubricant technology. Uh, the category we're not winning, we're second place in. So I, I say all that to just get you thinking, you know, I'm not totally full of crap here. We've got some amazing scientists and chemists on staff. We've got the equipment. Uh, we've got some really clever thinkers in the building. And uh, yeah, we decided to apply that to sealant. And I'll be honest, I initially was thinking, you know, the world needs a higher pressure sealant. But of course, as tires have gotten bigger, pressures have come down. Uh, I started to change my thinking until I went, well, wait a minute, if it seals at 80 or 90 PSI, it's gonna seal twice as good at 30 or 40 PSI. And so what we have come up with is really pretty groundbreaking, if you ask me. It's a natural latex sealant um, that uses a technology we call fiber foam. And fiber foam is the combination of two uh, technologies that uh, really change the way the sealant works. So let's think of our mental model of sealant, right? You've got your tire here, it's spinning. I think people tend to think there's like a big puddle of sealant at the bottom here. And if you puncture, uh, you know, it, it's gonna, every time it comes around, you're essentially rolling through the sealant and it's gonna seal up. And we're gonna put glitter or cornmeal or corn cob or walnut shell or something in there. And as the sealant is escaping, that's gonna rush to the hole and plug it. Uh, I, I know that's certainly how I thought about it. I've had that conversation with numerous people, and I got to be honest, when we started testing these, uh, I got a little tire sample here. This is from that major um, uh, sealant brand that likes the color orange, and it's a really good product, but it's full of glitter, and when I take a tire and I puncture it every 10 degrees, so 36 holes in one tire, and it seals all of them, uh, but sometimes it seals on the first rotation, sometimes the third or the fourth rotation. Um, there's a pretty big spread. And when we open it up and we look at the tire, what I see is only one of the 36 had a piece of glitter in the seal. Now, there's also some glass bead in there. Most of the seals had a glass bead or two in there. But I think we need to change our mental model um, of how this works. And in a way, I think we're just going to throw that out the window and really think about the wheel as a centrifuge, right? If you've ever been on that ride at the uh, the carnival that spins, you know, and you get pinned up against the wall like this, and you know, everybody lift your arms, and it's really hard to lift your arms. Well, you know, the wheel is spinning with reasonably high rotational velocity. All those little glitter particles, um, or corn cob particles, or whatever you're using in there, they are all pinned out against the wall like you on the carnival ride. And so I think if you have a puncture far away from where a piece of glitter is, it is not gonna migrate uh, over there. And I find in our 36 punctures, we probably had five or six where you had a piece of glitter two, three millimeters from the hole that never was able to migrate in and cover the hole. So I think this whole mental model of these particles flowing in and damming up the hole was a little bit broken. Um, so I started thinking, well, I think we need a much lower density, higher surface area uh, filler it in the sealant. And so we started playing with you know, glass fiber and carbon fiber, and we realized quickly that the carbon fiber, uh, as you would normally get it, comes with this stuff called sizing. And sizing is like a liquid epoxy on the outside. The sizing is more dense than the carbon itself, and it makes it stick to itself. And so we tried probably 30 flavors of carbon fiber in our sealant, and none of them worked. They all did exactly uh, what the other particles did. They got pinned to the wall, they stuck together, they never migrated to the hole. And then we started thinking, well, what if we remove the sizing? And we started using acetone and some other chemicals to try to strip the sizing off, and that worked really amazingly. Um, but we were still missing something. And that was, could we 
do something to the sealant itself to make the particles more mobile. And the key is foam. And that's where you get fiber foam. I know it's not exactly that creative. But by adding a foaming agent, you actually make this huge amount of surface area inside the tire. And you think two things are happening here when you have a puncture. One, all that surface area is holding all of the fibers in amongst all the little uh, bubbles, right, on all those surfaces. As you puncture your tire, all those bubbles begin to collapse. And as they're collapsing into the hole, they are bringing their little carbon fiber hairs with them. And what you end up with, uh, and we will put, Michelle will put right here, um, are these little volcano looking things when you puncture from the outside of the tire that show 36 punctures around, 36 little carbon volcanoes uh, at every single puncture showing that we could actually make uh, the carbon fiber uh, migrate to the hole every single time as long as we kept it in the foam. So this felt pretty groundbreaking. And then we realized we had some challenges. The big one being that uh, we could seal up to eight millimeter holes with this, um, but your valve core, the inside of your valve core is only a three millimeter hole. And the syringe that you might wanna use to pump the sealant into the tire is about a three millimeter hole. And just trying to draw the sealant up into the syringe, you seal it every single time. Uh, we call this, fiber dam, right? It's like the beaver dam on the stream. The fibers will dam any orifice that you try to pump them in or out of. It just works that well. Um, so we went back to the drawing board and, uh, and we started playing around with, well, if you're going to have to pour it in, how do we make it last the longest period of time? And we came up with this concept of the replenisher. And so you think of what is a sealant, right? It's liquid latex, you've got a solvent, maybe an antifreeze, uh, some particulates, they're all kind of in the same family. Um, it's been really hard to make a truly better solvent because, or better sealant because you're, you're typically having to choose. I want better sealing means more latex, but that means shorter life, right? I want longer life, that means less latex and more antifreeze or solvent, um, that means less sealing power. Here we're able to use a long life uh, solution because we have this amazing power of carbon fiber in our fiber foam, but it's not going to last forever. And so to replenish this every three to four months in a moderate climate, uh, could be out as far as six months. If you're in a cooler, rainier climate, uh, you can add sealant replenisher right through your valve, I'm finding my valve with the little tube that it comes with. Um, and this will keep the sealant, uh, alive for over a year. Uh, you know, we're thinking somewhere in the 18 months plus is possible in certain climates. And even in really dry, hot climates, you're still able to keep the system going uh, for about a year. So we've made this cool little graph uh, here, thank you, Michelle, that show you put it in, you've got race day ceiling power uh, on day one. And then if every three to four months you were adding one to three ounces of the replenisher, you can maintain that race day ceiling um, for an entire year. Whereas we look at the race day products that are on the market now, I mean, a lot of these last less than a month. Some of them last as short as a week. And yet our product that can sit in there for a year has roughly equivalent sealing power because of the power of carbon foam. Now, how do we get the carbon? How did we come to, you know, we're not going to strip the sizing off of carbon with acetone. And this is where our friends at Carbon Fiber Recycling, CFR, come in. Uh, they are this amazing project out of Oak Ridge, Tennessee, uh, really working on the next generation of recycled carbon fiber. You know, dirty industry secret, all this stuff, the wheels, the frames, race cars, airplanes, it all ends up in the landfill because there's nothing to do with it. And so some really smart people have been uh, working on what is the next stage of life for carbon, and they've come up with a process uh, called pyrolization, Pyrolization is pretty amazing. It's uh, superheating in a vacuum. And what we do, and, and we will link below to the video, but they're literally putting bicycle frames and wheels and race car parts, uh, you know, through a shredder, chipping it up into small pieces, and then running it through a vacuum pyrolyzer. And what comes out of that are pure, raw, unsized carbon fibers, which end up in our sealant, a methane gas, 
uh, comes from the breakdown of the epoxy. That gas is actually used to power the furnace that pyrolyzes the carbon. So once the process starts, it is an off-the-grid, energy-neutral, essentially, uh, process. And then a petroleum product comes out that's one step away from being jet fuel. And so they're actually turning that petroleum product into jet fuel on site. Uh, CFR, link to the website below, fascinating company and process. Um, but we were thrilled to meet, <laughs> meet them because we could actually take uh, these old frames, old wheels, uh, aircraft parts, you know, all of the prototyping uh, for th this was actually done using the bodywork from a Corvette C5R Le Mans race car um, <laughs> that they shipped us probably 500 pounds of carbon uh, that had come from recycling this car. The pr current production batch, we'll show it in the video, I think there's half a dozen Kestrel brand bike frames, uh, a couple of NASCAR uh, race car front fascias and some other things that have made it into this product. Um, the thing that's cool about the carbon in this state, you know, when it's unsized, it's just carbon in the fiber uh, form. That is one step away from being uh, activated charcoal, which is actually used as a water filter, uh, like the Brita or any, any water filter that's got a cartridge. So, you know, from a trail safety, road safety, environmental safety, you've got a bio-neutral uh, thing in carbon fiber, you know, if, if some were to come out in a puncture, you are leaving less carbon on the trail side than you are leaving from your tire wear. Of course, tires contain carbon black, one step away also from carbon fiber. Um, it's just a very uh, environmentally safe product. And then at the end of life, you're peeling it all out like you would with any sealant. The carbon fibers are all trapped in the latex, and you can dispose of that uh, and hopefully go back for a reload. So to, uh, I guess, refresh, up to eight millimeter holes, uh, up to 80 PSI at a six millimeter hole, um, up to 18 month life expectancy, probably 12 to 14 for most people, um, cannot be poured from the valve, absolutely pour it through the valve. Uh, and then everybody wanted me to do, I've been doing these in the office for about the past year, so I've got my number one screwdriver, four millimeter hole, I've got my awesome uh, zip 303 here full of fiber films. We'll spin it to get it nice and foamy because you know you're only going to get a flat when you're riding so it's spinning um, and we're going to puncture. This is a four millimeter hole and you're going to say Josh don't do it on your desk in your studio you're going to get latex everywhere but in general you know sometimes we get a few drops but usually we get like one or two right. All right, everybody, so I have set up my phone on a little tripod here so you can see the screwdriver going in. This is a number one Phillips screwdriver from our friends at Viha. Uh, it's just over four millimeters in diameter. I like using a Phillips because it's just not as clean as an awl. Um, it makes more of a realistic hole. And like we said, we can seal consistently up, we've sealed up to eight millimeters, consistently we seal at six plus. Um, but I think the real benefit of this technology is just how quickly and cleanly it tends to seal. Uh, so let's get it spinning around. Let's get our sealant kind of out, flung to the edges as it would be in the real world. And then we're gonna go ahead and um, stab the tire, uh, see how much air we hear come out. It should be very little. We're at 40 PSI. That's a lot higher than I think most people are gonna run in a tire like this. Uh, but that is a harder challenge for that sealant. So let's, uh, we'll pick a place. Right here, I've got my phone running. I am gonna go ahead and just stab it in. Okay, so there you go. You hear it went right in. We had no air loss that I could hear. Um, pressure still feels quite good. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a fling and we were gonna see how many revolutions it takes to, uh, to seal up that hole. So here we go. And it's sealed. Look at that, one revolution. Doesn't always work uh, when you try to put it on film, but there you have it. Um, we've got, let's set our screwdriver down. Let's find our hole. Oh, there it is. Uh, yep, you can see it there. Let's kind of zoom in with our, okay, so you're all nice and sealed. Uh, and let's look at the mess that we've made. Gosh, we've got one drop, maybe a tiny little drop there. Um, Kind of give you an idea of the table we're on here. That's really it. Uh, put that back.
back up there. Pretty darn clean. Uh, that is the benefit here. I can guarantee you that there is a little uh, dam of carbon fiber uh, right now stacked up behind that hole, um, all packed together, uh, keeping the sealant from escaping and making a structural carbon reinforced plug uh, on our awesome uh, zip tire here today. So anyway, that is the technology we have. We're super excited about it. The feedback from our uh, athletes in the real world has been amazing. Uh, and we think that you will hopefully have similar results. So there you are, Silk Ultimate Tubeless Sealant Fiber Seal, link to the product below. Please like us, uh, follow us, leave some comments or questions. Uh, come follow us at Marginal Gains as well. And uh, we always love hearing from you and talking with you. So that is it. Uh, safe riding, rubber side down, everybody, and have a great day.